Today is finally gonna be the day that I'm gonna test my one rep maxes here on the channel. I think it's been since like 2016 since I've actually tested what I can do on the squat bench and deadlift. I've done a couple like heavy sets on the bench press here on the channel, um, but nothing where I'm like really working up to heavyweight and seeing where I'm at. That's mostly because as many of you guys know, uh, I sustained an injury many years ago that's kind of still been plaguing me uh, in recent years. I feel like I'm finally in a position to make myself accountable, get back to some heavy strength training, and I'm ready to test my maxes. Now I actually already did the uh, squat and bench press tests two days ago, and we're gonna recap all that footage in a little bit. Um, so today, I'm gonna be going to the gym and hitting the deadlift. I wanna give a shout out to Bryce Lewis for the thumbnail idea on this video. Uh, I saw him upload a video a couple weeks ago and thought it was uh, kind of hilarious. So anyway, shout out to Bryce. I'll have his channel linked down below. I'm gonna get my pre-workout meal ready, get my pre-workout ready, and then we're gonna go smash the workout. I'm super, I'm super excited for this today. Like, the last test day, I was a little bit I would say more nervous than excited. Today, I'm just like ready to go kill it. And I haven't been this motivated for training in like quite some time. So super excited to show you guys and recap how everything goes today. So for a max deadlift pre-workout, we need something serious. So we are gonna go with the Jeff Nippert Signature Kiwi Lime Prolific pre-workout, two scoops of this. And then for my pre-workout meal lately, I've been doing this protein for oats, which is basically just protein designed to put in oatmeal. Um, so yeah, let me get that ready. This is gonna be our pre-workout meal. We've got the protein for oats oatmeal. And then I've got a peach here and a kiwi. This kiwi's actually a little bit a little bit hard. It's not, <laughs> not quite up to standard, but we're gonna eat it anyway. Um, I like to have fruit pre-workout because for reasons actually I'm gonna talk about in another video. Um, and then we're gonna go with two scoops of prolific. Oh yeah. One scoop. We're gonna do a heaping. Two scoops. Alright. I'm gonna down this and then I will check in with you guys over at the gym. So the day I'm here testing my max deadlift, first time in three years, the two platforms I normally, normally test on had a big flood, so they were like soaked in water, so you're not allowed to use them today. So anyway, we're gonna make a makeshift setup over here with a couple of yoga mats and we're gonna make it happen regardless. I'm gonna do a really thorough warm up today. I'm gonna do a bunch of foam rolling for my upper back. I'm gonna work out my hips a little bit, they're still a little bit tight um, from the squats, I'm guessing. Um, then I'm gonna progressively pyramid my way up to my max weight. Um, so I'll probably just start with like 135 for eight, then I'll probably do 225 for four or five, 315, uh, 365, and then once I get to 405, I'll probably just be doing singles from there forward. Um, something like that, I might skip a couple uh, of those weight marks depending on how I'm feeling, um, but that's generally how I'm gonna set it up and I will check in with you guys once I get some weight on the bar. Let's go. Here we go. Easy. That was 475, it actually felt real easy. Um, now I'm wondering, should I go straight to 500? I think I wanna lift in between. Cause like I, I, it's been so long since 500, so I'm gonna go 485, and then I'm gonna try for five, depending on how that goes. Let's get it. Here we go. So that was just 485. First of all, that's like a three year PR for me. So I'm actually really stoked with that. The thing about sumo is it's always slow off the floor, whereas conventional is usually a little more snappy off the floor and then slow to kind of uncurl the back at the top. So that's normal. It was slow off the ground. I just watched it back, but throughout the concentric, there was no real sticking point. So I decided I'm actually gonna leave it at that just because I think 500 is a milestone I wanted to hit today, but ultimately it's, it's an arbitrary number. So that, rep, I watched it back from two different angles. It was a little slow off the floor and I do have straps on and I'm not accustomed to lifting that kind of weight. So I'm gonna leave it at, at, at 485 for today. I'm satisfied with that. And then in a couple months when I test again, I'm very confident that I'll be well over 500. I'm going to uh, finish off this leg workout. Actually, I'm gonna do a, a little bit of uh, machine squats today uh, just because I, I maxed out on barbell squats um, two days ago. So we're gonna hit some machine squats for sets of eight to 10. 
Then I'm gonna do some glute ham raises just to finish off the hamstrings, a little bit of calves, and then that is gonna be a wrap for the workout. I'm gonna go back home, analyze all the footage, and then give you guys an update on the other two lifts. So I'll check in with you guys back at home. So I actually just uploaded the clips here to my computer myself. I'm gonna go through my squat and my bench maxes from Tuesday. Now, some of you guys might be wondering what I did leading into the max test. Quickly gonna go through this. I basically did five modifications to my normal training. Uh, the first one is that I reduced my training volume a little bit on the accessory lifts in the week leading up to the max testing. Um, I also did like a sort of practice day where I worked up to about 90% on all three of the lifts on one day. And I just did this to build confidence and see how that relatively heavy, but yet not still max weight would move. So two days before my initial max test. Another thing I did was a walkout with 405 on the squat. And the reason I did this is because it has been over three years since I put that kind of weight on my back. Fourth thing, nutritionally, I did increase my carbs uh, just the day before I tested. And then I made sure I always had a full rest day on um, the day before I did any max testing. So on the first testing day on Tuesday, I woke up 163 pounds on the nose. So let's start with the squat. I warmed up as I normally would. Um, so I got to about 365, did that for a single. That moved super well. Um, and then just gradually did load increases from there. Now you guys may notice I'm squatting high bar here, uh, which I basically do because it allows me to maintain a more upright lifting posture, which takes a little bit of pressure off my lower back. Uh, but it also causes the squat to become much more knee dominant. Um, so I'm actually significantly weaker with the high bar position. What I'm gonna do in my next training cycle, like starting next week, is I'm gonna transition to low bar because just by shifting the bar down a couple vertebrae on my back, it allows my posture to be a little bit more forward. And so that allows my hip musculature, like my glutes and my adductors, to get so much more involved in the lift. So here it is, the big 405. Uh, overall, I'm super happy with how this moved. Um, and even though, like for someone of my level of training advancement, it might not necessarily be like anything to write home about, I'm actually really proud of this weight because this is a weight that has been kind of like a mental barrier in my mind for a while now. And so being able to execute it pretty easily feels like a weight lifted off my shoulders in a sense. It's almost like, I don't know if you guys have a weight that it's just like anytime you load that on the bar, you feel a little bit nervous. For whatever reason, 405 was like that weight for me. So yeah, just looking at the lift here, one thing I would note is that my speed on the descent was slower than I'd like ideally. And I think that's more so a confidence thing than anything. Ideally with a max squat, you wanna find a middle ground between just letting the weight kind of free fall and doing like a slow eccentric rep. So somewhere in the middle, you're gonna find that balance where you still get that bounce out of the bottom, uh, but yet you're not falling so fast that you lose control. And by the same token, you're not going so slowly that you start to unnecessarily fatigue yourself. So happy with 405 for now. All right, so then after that, we moved on to the bench press. Now, this was interesting because I was actually this close to scrapping this max attempt day uh, because for whatever reason, the bench press just wasn't feeling good that day. The first couple of warm ups, the bar was like slightly warped. So it was like moving back and forth in my wrists. And then for whatever reason, all the warm up sets, sets were just feeling really slow off my chest. So I was gonna scrap it, but I said, you know what? I'm gonna keep myself accountable and see basically what I could do on an off day. And I think that that's a pretty good idea. Like if you have something written on paper that you plan to do, you should go in and execute it and not grab at whatever excuse it is that you can find on that day. And at worst, you just figure out, okay, this is about what I can do on a day that I'm not at 100%, basically. Anyway, as it turns out, I worked up to 345 pounds. It ended up moving much more smoothly than my warmups did. And sometimes this is the way it is. Like sometimes the warmups will suck and then you'll get to the heavy stuff and it'll also suck. And then sometimes you'll get to the heavy stuff and it'll actually move really well. And luckily it was the latter case for me on this day. I ended up going up to 350 and I don't think my butt popped up. I do use a lot of hip drive and a lot of leg drive on the bench press, uh, but I'm pretty sure that my, my glutes were down. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle. One thing you guys may also notice is my heels kind of come up after the, the lift off. And then when I go to drive it off my chest, I drive my heels down into the ground as hard as I can. And that generates a ton of leg drive for me. Now, my power lifters who are watching, I'm actually not 100% sure what the rule is. I know that your heels have to be planted, at least in the IPF, but I'm not sure if they need to be planted throughout the whole lift, like from the point of liftoff, or if it's 
after the start command or after the press command. So I'm not 100% sure if this would be meet legal or not, uh, but in any case, pretty happy with it as a, as a gym lift. Oh, and the other thing you might notice that I do here is I sink the bar more into my chest. A lot of people say that this isn't legal, uh, but the technical rule is you're allowed to sink it down into your chest. It's just that once the bar has sunk, it has to become motionless. And then the referee will give you the press command. And then at that point, you can't allow the bar to sink further into your chest. So it can't sink twice. It can only sink once. And then once you get the press command, you have to press it straight up from there. I do think I've probably got like something like 365 in me on a good day, um, but I'm gonna leave that until I finish my next training cycle. Definitely think I'll be able to bust out a solid PR there. And I'm gonna shout out my Instagram here. I documented a few of these lifts on my Instagram story, and that's where I'll do a lot more of the behind the scenes of my training. So if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you go check it out. And all right, up next, the deadlift. So you guys already know how I feel about that. I'm curious what you guys think. Do you think I should have gone for the 500 pound deadlift having seen the 485? or was I smart to be a little bit more patient, a little bit more conservative? A couple things to note on the deadlifts here. First thing, I am using straps. The main reason for this is that my back injury was asymmetrical. So it was on my left side and that was the side that I always had the underhand grip on. So I'm still a little bit wary of doing the alternate grip and I hate the hook grip. It hurts my thumbs and I'm not strong enough to do a double overhand without hook grip. Uh, so I'm just gonna use the straps for now and I'm content enough if it doesn't technically count. It's still a much safer way for me to lift. I also pull sumo. Longtime viewers know I pull sumo. I'm significantly stronger in sumo. From a biomechanical perspective, there's not a significant difference between pulling sumo versus pulling conventional in terms of muscle activation differences. The lifts are actually very similar. And the range of motion difference between sumo and conventional, obviously sumo has a slightly shorter range of motion, um, but there's a number of reasons why this probably isn't significant in practice, not the least of which is that most of the strongest deadlifters in the world actually pull conventional. So if sumo was giving you like a huge advantage, it's definitely not showing up at the highest level uh, of powerlifting. Uh, another thing that I do is I take my grip straight down. And the reason for that is that the shortest distance between the short, the shoulder and the bar is gonna be with the arms straight down. A lot of people make the error of going way too close or way too wide which is only gonna shorten your apparent arm length. Now for me as someone who already has short arms, that makes me a very good bench presser because it reduces the range of motion that the bar has to travel. It actually is a major disadvantage in the deadlift because my hips have to drop lower in order to reach the bar. So to kind of make up for that, I make sure I take the shortest path to gripping the bar, which is like straight down. So anyway, 45 is where I'm at now on the deadlift. I know that's gonna go up in the next couple months. Super excited about where everything is at. Um, also, I did a video a couple months ago, basically outlining two different ways that you can test your maxes. You can do an AMRAP test or you can do a max single test like I did here today. I'll link that down below if you'd like a little more information on that. And like I said, I'm gonna do another video outlining my recovery process from my injury and my entire approach around that next weekend. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys all here in the next video.